So before we jump in, let me introduce myself. I'm Dr. Ross Kopelman. I'm a hair surgeon. I have a lot of expertise in this subject. We spend a lot of time on this channel, actually, talking about hair loss and plastic surgery. If these are topics that you enjoy, hit that subscribe button and let's get started. It is very common for me to see men in the clinic who are on testosterone replacement therapy or they're taking creatine. And they're doing this to increase muscle mass, of course, or sex drive, or to increase their energy levels. So that's super common. The question is, does this have an impact on hair loss? And the first thing you really have to have an appreciation for is the pathway of why we get hair loss in general. So number one, if you have a genetic propensity for hair loss, you have a family history of either your father or your grandfather's having hair loss, you have a higher likelihood of having what's called androgenetic alopecia. And that means that your hair follicles are going to be more sensitive to DHT. Now the pathway is that testosterone converts to DHT by the enzyme 5-alpha reductase. So once you have a better appreciation for that, then we can talk about what is the impact of taking testosterone or creatine or any other exogenous anabolic steroids added to your body. So by no means am I telling you not to take testosterone, creatine, or steroids. My purpose is to educate you so that you know the impact of these medications for your hair loss. Now, if you're someone who has a family history of having hair loss, or you're noticing any thinning or any hair loss, then I would be cautious about starting any of this therapy because when you add testosterone, creatine, or any steroids to your body, you're essentially increasing your testosterone levels. And as I mentioned before, that will be converted to DHT. And if you have androgenetic alopecia, your hair follicles will be more sensitive to DHT. And so you're going to increase the rate of hair loss. Now it doesn't happen to everyone, but it's very, very common for this to happen. And I see this routinely in our clinic. With that said, you might want to take the medication because of the benefits to your muscles, to your energy levels, or your doctor recommends it. So I'm not telling you not to take any of this medication. I'm just warning you about one of the major side effects. If you are currently taking testosterone or hormonal replacement and you're starting to experience hair loss, guess what? You could always stop. So when you stop the medication, you're going to decrease your testosterone levels and thereby decrease the amount of floating DHT and your hair will start to go back into its normal cycles because it won't be suppressed by the DHT. I do want to point out that if you are taking hormonal replacement or testosterone for medical reasons, I would never tell you to stop taking the medication because your health is more important than your hair. I know that losing hair can be emotionally distressing. It can impact your self-esteem, but I know a lot of people who have thin hair, who don't have a full head of hair, or who are completely bald, and they feel confident in their skin. So at the end of the day, yes, hair is important, but feeling great about yourself is even more. My goal is to make you feel great about yourself. I will do everything I can to educate you about what you can do to preserve your hair and grow your hair, but at the end of the day, what the most important takeaway is, is that you're confident in your own skin, and that's what I care most about. So, I hope I helped you address your questions today about the impact of steroids, creatine, and testosterone on hair loss. If you have any questions, please leave them below. I am doing everything I can to help you learn about ways to preserve your hair, and I love really educating and teaching. So please, if you like what you saw, hit the subscribe button, and I'll see you in the next video.